G'day guys, it's Matt here. It's a uh, lovely morning here at the development block. Yeah, so I'm down here. Um, I've just got a couple of sections of paddocks to spray. Um, yeah, this is just some stuff I didn't do last time. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. While we're here, we're gonna have a look at Tiny 2 here. <laughs> So as you can see, this is the, um, I think in a few videos ago now, um, this was in progress. So you can see the original um, framework there was just up there and then across there with the vertical slats. And it, um, you still got quite a bit of dirt and that that goes through those, those um, little vertical slats. And it, uh, yeah, just, we we're finding that there was quite a bit of stuff going over the top as well, and particularly if you're you're cleaning up any trees or um, sticks and stuff. Yeah, they come through and they can hit the um, the GPS um, receiver there, and that's not what you want. Um, it's a quick way to throw money away when you keep damaging that. Um, but yeah, so this here is just got the, um, got that top bit welded on, um, and then yeah, put this really heavy duty um, mesh stuff on there so you can see that nice and thick um and yeah it is going to be quite solid i think and what this will do is yeah protect protect everything behind from sticks and things yeah so when you're pushing dirt it will act a bit like a hungry board as well um there will be a bit, little bits of dirt fall through that but most of the clods are, are a decent size so um yeah it'll it'll be able to push all that when the conditions are right um all the way up to the top there so yeah, it um, it does make a difference. Uh, Tiny One has um, that sort of thing already. And um, yeah, it was just very noticeable, the difference. So you still wanna be able to see through that because yeah, when you got the blade lifted up, obviously you gotta see where you're going. So that's why it's got the mesh on there. So the other thing is Tiny One is into full swing working. Now it's here at the development block, um, been tidying up a few things, um, Phil's been on it. And yeah, I haven't been down here to take any footage. So um, hopefully today I'll be able to get a little bit of footage of that. And maybe throughout the week, um, if someone's available, yeah, we'll be able to get a bit of, bit of footage of that working and what, what we're doing with that. Yeah, so I might explain what why we call this the development block and what the sort of overall plan is. So years and years and years ago, most of this was farmed. And what that means is a lot of the trees here are classified as regrowth. Um, so there's no issues with um, with knocking them out and, and re-farming it. Um, also, there's a lot of contour banks in some of the groups of trees. And that also means we've got to get to the contour banks to um, fix them, um, tidy them all up and make them bigger. And yeah, we've got to obviously get rid of the trees for that. But most of them are regrowth. Um, so yeah, there's no no issues there. So there's a little fair bit of that going on. We're just trying to get all the land that we can um, back into farming production. And um, yeah, that's sort of why we call it the development block. But also we've got, you know, things like silos um, down the track, hopefully, you know, sheds, things like that. Um, and yeah, that's that's sort of the, the general gist there of why we call it the development block. It's going to be a few years of just poking away at it, but um, yeah, we'll... We'll get there. We've got the machines to do it, that is for sure. And um, maybe some of the really early watchers of the channel will recognise this, but maybe not. Um, so this is a Kelly Chains. Now, I did mention in the previous video that we were going to Kelly Chain over where the Ripper had been because of the clods. Um, so yeah, all this is, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you just got these discs here and they obviously it's in a diamond shape and as you come along these spin around so it's it's sort of like a a, a set of discs or offsets but miniature and um they work really well at, at breaking down clods and in the right conditions they do actually do a good job of of killing um killing some weeds too um, but yeah they don't really go too deep and they sort of skim along the top a bit so um, they just work really well um, if you want to incorporate some stubble 
or yeah knock out some really small weeds or yeah just break down some clods so that is the story there and yeah we got the good old triple five versi hooked to them it's basically all it does now it's sort of the horsepower is sort of well suited to to this um this kelly chain so it's sort of just yeah is pretty much all it does that and mother bin um, at harvest time so it's uh getting a bit easier life now than it once used to well i got my little bit of spraying done fairly uneventful um but yeah so back here at tiny one and yeah so what's going on here is all the contours from the paddock um come into this waterway where these trees are but yeah there was a lot of regrowth just in this section here so yeah just cleaning that up eventually we can tidy up those contours properly but in the meantime yeah just going through ripping it to open it up a bit get any roots that are still there and yeah just hopefully um yeah it won't be long maybe run over a bit with some offsets and the kelly chains and um yeah get it into shape and and then it can be farmed <laughs> So it doesn't seem to be working too hard but it's just nice to get this soil all busted up at least moisture can get into there and might be able to grow something see the difference it makes just brings up all the little roots and shoots and things we're gonna leave Phil to it here and I've got to head back up and do another bit of spraying on the row gator so yeah it's basically just sprayer hopping at the minute I've just finished playing musical sprayers I guess you'd call it hopping in from one sprayer to the other getting a few um, paddocks tidied off there and now on to the gassing so only a day or so left to go on this but I thought I'd explain a bit more about why we use gas what it does how much it is what's going on um, so yeah hopefully I'll be able to answer a few of those questions um, currently I got it filling up over there um, but yeah I can show you on this tank what sort of how it works a bit and yeah we'll go through a few things 
So we have these hoses here. So we've got the red one is liquid, yellow one is vapor. So this in this particular setup here, um, it, it's sucking air through this hose, which is sucking all the air out of the applicator tank. And then because this hose is attached and open, obviously it's creating a vacuum in the in that tank, so it's sucking the liquid through. And um, yeah, that comes through this one. So it's got um, quick release latches on there. So if there's any issues, you can just hit them and they, they shut it all down. Um, and yeah, it's just a, like a massive gas fitting, which would make sense. And uh, so that's how, how it happens. So sorry about the ambient noise. There's a few things running, but you can see here, that's what it is. And it's 82% nitrogen so this is called anhydrous ammonia now anhydrous just means um, like no water so what happens is when it gets introduced to water whether that's the moisture in the ground or in your eyes or anywhere it um, it attracts to moisture and it binds with the moisture really easily so you don't want really dry ground otherwise there's nothing for the for the liquid to to and, and obviously it turns into a gas when you let the pressure out but there's nothing for it to bind in the soil so you really don't want it too dry but and then also if it's really really humid weather then you'll find it'll it'll start gassing off really well badly so yeah you'll just see a lot of gas coming off behind it because it's binding with the the moisture in the air in Australia here, at the minute anyway, we're paying, I think it's about $1,900 a tonne. So usually it's maybe about $1,000 a tonne. So yeah, we're, it, it's, it's nearly double the price. Um, but if you consider that this is, like I said before, 82% nitrogen, um, urea, which is the other main way of applying nitrogen, is only 40, 40 something percent I, I can't remember off the top of my head but it's 40 something percent now that is about maybe that $1,300 a ton mark for that so it is cheaper per ton but you're not getting as much um, nitrogen per ton if that makes sense so it still works out if you're just chasing nitrogen works out um, not too bad but obviously you've got extra cost with um, setting up the system to be able to apply this rather than just getting a spreader and spreading it out like you do with urea and the other thing uh, I didn't say before but I will now is we are putting on about a hundred units of nitrogen um, now we're putting about that that's similar to what we do obviously we, we move that around a bit each year um, just depending on what crop's going in there, what crop was in there the previous year. Um, we aren't putting any nitrogen on any of the paddocks that either had chickpeas in last year or that are having chickpeas put in them this year um, because as quite a few of you would know that chickpeas is actually a nitrogen fixing crop. So it puts nitrogen into the soil. Um, so yeah, there's not as much of a need to uh, put gas on those paddocks. And also, we've got to weigh in too the cost. Obviously, it's a, nearly twice as expensive this year. So, um, you know, you've got to work out, well, what are we chasing for yield? Um, or will we settle for a less, a lower yield and not quite put as much nitrogen on? Um, so yeah, 100 units of, of nitrogen is, is a fairly, yeah, that's what, you know, a fairly usual rate. It's usually between the 80 and 120 units um so yeah it's, it's it's we're pretty well doing what we would normally it's not fun when when your inputs double in price well you know obviously we're going to need to get paid more to make it work um but anyway we just got to keep trucking along so here we have the disc opener now this is on a bit of a angle you can see it's just on a bit of an angle now as the dirt comes here it just cuts a little groove in the dirt. And then we can see here, we've got a little scraper there. And then in behind that is our, it's a little bit dirty, but you can see we've got our, our tubes going in there. So there's two hoses that go into there. 
and they go all the way up to these things. So what these things here do, they're, what we call them pots, but that basically takes, uh, like you've got a fair amount of pressure coming through there, going through the regulator into here, and that just uh, basically condenses all the liquid down. Um, these freeze right up, and that means you're getting liquid, mostly liquid, um, down into the ground. Um, and yeah, so it does a better job. So we've got two hoses there, one's a liquid, one's a gas line, and it works out to be roughly 80% liquid and 20% gas.